I'm Kyle McHugh. I lead the data science department at the marketing store. It's one of the world's largest privately held marketing agencies. Um, you know, some of our clients, McDonald's, T-Mobile, uh, Nissan, Renault, uh, Mitsubishi Global Partnership. And uh, kind of over the last few years, I got into data science and I, I kind of changed jobs pretty rapidly where I found that a lot of companies I thought weren't really doing data science the right way. Um, it wasn't really effective for the companies. They were kind of doing themselves a disservice. So I found a place now where it can really be effective. And, and recently I've spent a lot of time taking what I've learned, going through that process of changing jobs, of building a team, of hiring data scientists, and started to share a lot of that on LinkedIn to help other people that, you know, I get, I get so many people messaging me on LinkedIn every day, like, Kyle, please help me do this. Please guide me what should I do that I've really been spending a lot of time trying to help the community and, and give back and share with other people what I've learned so that they can be more successful. Yeah, I've seen you've been very active and I think it's helping a lot of people. I get similar messages and it's great that you're able to spend time and actually give back. Nice. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's like I'm taking, I take the train to work every morning. It's about an hour commute. So I just write a quick message every morning and post it to LinkedIn, basically sharing, something that took me a long time to learn. And it's like, Hey, let me make this easy. Teach you guys in like two minutes, something that I spent a lot of time figuring yeah. out. So hopefully it speeds up the process for other people. Yeah, I think it's helpful for everyone as a community. So thank you. So a question for you, you mentioned that you moved around in companies because the, there weren't using data appropriately or ineffective. Do you have any examples that you can share? Not of the specific company. Oh, of sure. I've got, yeah, I've got, I've got lots. Um, so I don't want to call out the company by name, but it is the world's largest beer company. Okay. Um, one of the world's largest CPG companies that I was in charge of data science for the global sales department, which we were supporting like 60,000 salespeople around the world. And we had like zero budget. It's like, we couldn't get computers. We couldn't get laptops. You're supposed to bring your own device and then use Citrix for a remote desktop. Um, they wouldn't let me hire full-time employees. I just had interns and we were doing like these hundred million plus dollar projects having a massive impact. And I was like, Hey, can I get some full-time people so that my team isn't constantly churning? Like we had really talented people, but still everyone's churning every few months, every six months, et cetera. And they're just like, well, no, because of budget and this and that. And I was like, man, we're pulling in $50 billion of revenue. Wow. How are you going to tell me budget's an issue, right? So, you know, it was crazy. And I, I ended up moving to Constellation Brands, which is the third largest beer company in the U.S. They own Corona, Modelo, Ballast Point, some other, other brands. Um, but they're like, hey, we're going to build this team around you for data science. I was like, you know, that's great. This sounds awesome. And they're like, and, and I kind of figured out, here's a bunch of different projects we can do to really drive a big impact in the business and I planned it all out. They're like, this is awesome. This is exactly what we need to do. I was like, okay, so now we need to hire people and we need to buy data. And they're like, can you do it yourself <laughs> with data that costs no money? And I was like, well, not really. Um, you know, so a lot of these companies just have unrealistic expectations that they think we're going to hire one data scientist and they're going to do everything. Like they're going to work some wizardry, black magic and then all of a sudden they're just going to produce these amazing results and you're going to make millions and millions of dollars and it just doesn't work that way like it it's an investment <laughs> right <laughs> right it's like it's an investment and it's a team effort and you really got to have a commitment at a senior leadership level where a lot of companies just kind of dabble they're like oh hey this is like the sexy cool thing that everyone says we should do so we gotta we gotta get one of those guys we gotta get a data scientist in here and it's like well hey that that doesn't really work. Like, you know, if you have a basketball team, you can't just get one good player and be like, Hey, go play against, yeah, that's a good analogy. you know, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. You're like, you need to hire the whole team, not just one person. Right. Absolutely. So back to you providing so much content online, there was an article you wrote, uh, 20 tips for becoming a data scientist. Oh yeah. That was an old one. I like number eight, <laughs> that continuous improvement that you won't get it on your first try and that you basically have to get something done fast and, and fail fast and be agile. Can you talk more about that and why that's important? Sure, absolutely. I mean, so 
you're basically just you're going to end up screwing it up the first time. It's it's almost inevitable um, because you don't know how to really drive the business value until you get it into the marketplace. So you're going to end up making some mistakes. It's not going to be optimal the first time. So you don't want to spend too much time trying to make things perfect. You just want to get it out there so you can get feedback so you can better guide how do we move forward in the future. And that's, that's on so many different levels. That's not just the product level going into the marketplace, but it's designing your software. Like you can't try to architect the entire code base up front and then, try to build it all out and then start executing and realize like, Oh, it doesn't work the way that we thought it would. Right. You know, it's like get something done as quickly as possible and then you can test it. And then once you test it, you get feedback and you can improve it. I mean, I think, I think that's something that's, that's, you know, it's applicable in business. It's applicable in data science. It's applicable in our personal lives. Mm -hmm. Like no matter how smart you are, you really don't know what's going to happen in the future you have to test things. Like right. You've got to test things rapidly, get that feedback so that you can improve. Right. Yeah. I really, that, that one really kind of resonated with me, that point number eight. So yeah. Have you got, have you got a story on that? Oh, everything in life, I guess, even yeah. relationships, right? You don't get it right. The sure. First time. You have to test it out, end it quick and, you know, move forward. <laughs> right, right, right. It's like when, <laughs> so, once you know something's wrong, like don't spend time like, you know, there's that, that sunk cost bias that people yes. think like, oh, we spent so a month working on this or this relationship's been going on for two years or something. Exactly. Like, Look, if it's wrong, if it's, if it's not the right solution for the future, just stop, like immediately, just cut it off. Yep. Don't waste another minute because you're never going to get that minute back in your life. I completely like, agree. It's, it's non-refundable. Your time is non-refundable. It's the most valuable thing that you have in your entire life. You yeah. know, money is you know, money is only worth, you know, worth anything if you spend it and you have to be around to spend it. Like the only thing that's really valuable in your life is your time. So like, don't, don't waste it. I mean, it's so, it's so valuable. It's so critical that I think a lot of people don't realize that they're in like a bad situation their job isn't going well. They yeah. should really quit. And they're like, well, I'm waiting to see if it improves. It's like, guess what? Not going to happen. Just yeah. cut it off, you know? <laughs> Right, absolutely. So going to the data science process, uh, what would you say is your kind of go-to tool or software? I, I'm sure you use several different tools for different reasons, but what would be your kind of favorite? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's Python. Like Python. The, one, the one thing that, that I found personally is taking this approach of being able to iterate rapidly and go from prototype to production quickly mm -hmm. is you can't, you can't rewrite things. Because one, one huge challenge that I had in the past is if you prototype something that looks good and then you show it to some executives and they're like, hey, that's great. Can we have it everywhere in the world tomorrow? And it'll be like, no, it doesn't exist. They're like, what do you mean it doesn't exist? You just showed it to me. Yeah. I was like, well, that's a prototype. We have to re-architect and rewrite the whole thing from scratch. So what I found was like, don't, don't throw together a really sloppy solution, even though you want to be fast. Yeah. Build a framework that allows you to rapidly develop and then take that and move it into production quickly with less effort. Like do that upfront work so that you have a framework to, do, to go from development to production. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're going to end up in this scenario where people are like, well, you, you showed us the thing. Why can't we have it? Like, Kate, you showed us the dashboard. Why isn't it live everywhere? You're like, right. well, it was a mock-up, you know. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. So, so I mean, Python is good and it, it empowers you to both prototype and put things into production. Okay. All so right. that's, that's my go-to. Did you learn R at some point as well or no? I did. I did. I kind of learned it and then I forgot it and then I relearned it. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's definitely got its use and there's people that prefer it. So I'm not knocking it or saying that it's bad. I'm just saying it's difficult to take something from R to turn it into a product that you're going to roll out into production. Okay. So if it's, if it's a one-off analysis or something that, Hey, this one market just has this special case. They need you to analyze this and get us some actionable insights really quickly. Mm -hmm. then that's totally fine. I just don't see it as being a tool that's, that's scalable. So it depends on your use case. Like I'm always focused on how do I build a product that scales? Okay. And I don't, I don't like to do a bunch of one-off analyses. Like let's build a product 
scales, let's do it really well, let's improve it, and then let's roll it out to 50 markets around the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, it, I've worked for big global companies, so, so that's been the case. You know, or even at this marketing agency, you know, we're, the, we're the global agency of record for Nissan Renault um, for their CRM. So it's like this has got to scale to 50 yeah. or 100 markets around the world. So that's, that's really based on my perspective, although R definitely has some use. Right. Okay. Thank you for sharing that. So going to you kind of personally, what, yeah. what's one of your personal goals for this year? My personal goals, man, that's tough. Um, <laughs> so one thing, one thing I'm really trying to do, so I'm starting to build out this course to help aspiring data scientists, you know, land jobs, that it's really challenging that a lot of people I see they're stuck and they're frustrated and they've got the skills, like they've gone to school, they learned the math, they learned how to program. They did all of these online courses, all this stuff, but they still can't figure out how to get a job. Right. That they're like, well, it's, it's so competitive. There's so many other people, et cetera. But the, but the reality is they don't understand the skill of finding a job. So I'm working on this course to really help a lot of people. So I want to get that, um, I want to get that out soon and be able to help a lot more people than, than right now just messaging 10 people back on LinkedIn per day. Because, you know, I'm getting a lot more people messaging me that it's like I can't even read all their messages or respond. So how do I help people at a larger scale be successful and kind of in that frustration that I know that I felt? And it's like it really sucks to, to want to do something so badly and try so hard and be like, I don't know how. Like there's no one there to help me. Right. right, so that's that's one thing I'm trying to do this year. Which platform is that going to sit on? Uh, I've got a website. It's datasciencedreamjob.com. Um, so it's all going to be my own membership site there. So okay. there's going to be there's going to be more information that I'll post on on LinkedIn soon. I've got a test group up. I've got about 20 people in it now. So I'm getting feedback from them and helping them and then making some improvements before I roll it out for everyone. Okay. Yeah. I'm sure that's going to really help a lot of people. And I'll send everybody to your site, whoever asks me questions. (laughs) Nice. Nice. I mean, like I said, the goal is really like, how do we help all these people out there? Like they get bad information, right? Like they're told, go to college, take all these courses, do this, do this, do this, go into all of this debt. But then no one teaches them like, How do you become good at interviewing? How do you email a recruiter? How do you set up your portfolio? How do you talk about your projects and and these different things? And no one really teaches them. They end up being stuck and they're like, I can't find a job. It's been six months or this one guy that I've been messaging. He said he's been looking for a job for over two years. Oh, wow. And a lot of it is just in his head at this point. And there's no one to like coach you on how do you change your mindset? How do you change your view of the world and the view of yourself so that you can be more successful? Right. That you kind of get stuck in a rut, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's really tough. So, Kyle, the last question I have for you is if you had to pick one country to live in for a whole year, other than the U.S., where would you live? Other than the U.S.? Oh. All right. Well, let's narrow it down to somewhere warm. Okay. I'm just going to, I'm just going to eliminate everywhere that's cold. Um, I don't know, maybe somewhere in Central America. Sounds like fun. Maybe, maybe a little dangerous somewhere, but it'd be cool. Uh, I don't know. That's a, that's a tough question. How about I live on the beach in Mexico for a year? That'd be fun. Okay, sure. All right. Thank you. All right, Kyle, it was very nice getting to know you. Thank you so much for being on Humans of Data Science. Yeah, absolutely. It's my pleasure, Kate. All right.